Exodus chapter 37. And Bezalel made the ark of shittim wood. Two cubits and a half was the length of it, and a cubit and a half the breadth of it, and a cubit and a half the height of it. And he overlaid it with pure gold within and without, and made a crown of gold to it round about. And he cast for it four rings of gold to be set by the four corners of it, even two rings upon the one side of it, and two rings upon the other side of it. And he made staves of shittim wood, and overlaid them with gold. And he put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark to bear the ark. And he made the mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half was the length thereof, and one cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And he made two cherubims of gold, beaten out of one piece made he them. On the two ends of the mercy seat, one cherub on the one end on this side, and another cherub on the other end on that side, out of the mercy seat made he the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubims spread out their wings on high, and covered with their wings over the mercy seat, with their faces one to another, even to the mercy seatward were the faces of the cherubims. And he made the table of shittim wood. Two cubits was the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And he overlaid it with pure gold, and made thereunto a crown of gold round about. Also he made thereunto a border of an handbreadth round about, and made a crown of gold for the border thereof round about. And he cast for it four rings of gold, and put the rings upon the four corners that were in the four feet thereof. Over against the border were the rings, the places for the staves to bear the table. And he made the staves of shittim wood, and overlaid them with gold to bear the table. And he made the vessels which were upon the table, his dishes, and his spoons, and his bowls, and his covers to cover with all of pure gold. And he made the candlestick of pure gold. Of beaten work made he the candlestick. His shaft and his branch, his bowls, his knops, and his flowers were of the same. And six branches going out of the sides thereof, three branches of the candlestick out of the one side thereof, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side thereof. Three bowls made after the fashion of almonds in one branch, a knop and a flower, and three bowls made like almonds in another branch, a knop and a flower. So throughout the six branches going out of the candlestick, and in the candlestick were four bowls made like almonds, his knops and his flowers, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, according to the six branches going out of it. Their knops and their branches were of the same. All of it was one beaten work of pure gold. And he made his seven lamps and his snuffers and his snuff dishes of pure gold. Of a talon of pure gold made he it, and all the vessels thereof. And he made the incense altar of shittim wood. The length of it was a cubit, and the breadth of it a cubit. It was four square, and two cubits was the height of it. The horns thereof were of the same, and he overlaid it with pure gold, both the top of it and the sides thereof round about, and the horns of it. Also he made unto it a crown of gold round about. And he made two rings of gold of it, under the crown thereof, by the two corners of it, upon the two sides thereof, to be places for the staves, to bear it withal. And he made the staves of shittim wood, and overlaid them with gold. And he made the holy anointing oil, and pure incense of sweet spices, according to the work of the apothecary. Exodus chapter 38. And he made the altar of burnt offering of shittim wood. Five cubits was the length thereof, and five cubits the breadth thereof. It was four square, and three cubits the height thereof. And he made the horns thereof on the four corners of it. The horns thereof were of the same, and he overlaid it with brass. And he made all the vessels of the altar, the pots and the shovels and the basins and the flesh hooks and the fire pans. All the vessels thereof made he of brass. And he made for the altar a brazen grate of network under the compass thereof beneath and to the midst of it. And he cast four rings for the four ends of the grate of brass to be places for the staves. And he made the staves of shittim wood and overlaid them with brass. And he put the staves into the rings on the sides of the altar to bear it with all. He made the altar hollow with boards, and he made the laver of brass and the foot of it of brass, of the looking glasses of the women assembling, which assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he made the court on the south side southward, the hangings of the court were of fine twine linen and a hundred cubits. Their pillars were twenty, and their brazen sockets twenty, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. And for the north side, the hangings were an hundred cubits, their pillars were twenty, and their sockets of brass twenty, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver. And for the west side were hangings of fifty cubits, their pillars ten, and their sockets ten, the hooks of the pillars were their fillets of silver. And for the east side, eastward fifty cubits. The hangings of the one side of the gate were fifteen cubits, their pillars three, and their sockets three. And for the other side of the court gate, on 
This hand and that hand were hangings of fifteen cubits, their pillars three, and their sockets three. All the hangings of the court round about were of fine twined linen, and the sockets for the pillars were of brass. The hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver, and the overlaying of their chapters of silver. And all the pillars of the court were filleted with silver. And the hanging for the gate of the court was needlework of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen. And twenty cubits was the length, and the height and the breadth was five cubits, answerable to the hangings of the court. And their pillars four, and their sockets of brass four, their hooks of silver, and the overlaying of their chapters, and their fillets of silver. And all the pins of the tabernacle, and of the court round about, were of brass. This is the sum of the tabernacle, even of the tabernacle of testimony, as it was counted according to the commandment of Moses for the service of the Levites, by the hand of Ithamar, son to Aaron the priest, and Bezalel the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made all that the Lord commanded Moses. And with him was Aholiab, son of Ahisamach, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver, and a cunning workman, and an embroider in blue, and in purple, and in scarlet, and fine linen. All the gold that was occupied for the work and all the work of the holy place, even the gold of the offering, was twenty and nine talents and seven hundred and thirty shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. And the silver of them that were numbered of the congregation was an hundred talents and a thousand seven hundred and three score and fifteen shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. A becca for every man that is half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary for every one that went to be numbered from twenty years old and upward for six hundred thousand and three thousand and five hundred and fifty men. And of the hundred talents of silver were cast the sockets of the sanctuary and the sockets of the veil and hundred sockets of the hundred talents a talent for a socket. And of the thousand seven hundred seventy and five shekels he made hooks for the pillars and overlaid their chapters and filleted them. And the brass of the offering was seventy talents and two thousand and four hundred shekels. And therewith he made the sockets to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the brazen altar, and the brazen grate for it, and all the vessels of the altar. And the sockets of the court round about, and the sockets of the court gate, and all the pins of the tabernacle, and all the pins of the court round about. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, and to Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer, and to our beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Wherefore, though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee that which is convenient, yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee, being such an one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ, I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. Whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him, that is, mine own bowels. Whom I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. But without thy mind would I do nothing, that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season, that thou shouldest receive him forever, not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved, especially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. If he hath wronged thee, or oweth thee aught, put that on mine account. I, Paul, have written it with mine own hand. I will repay it, albeit I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me even thine own self besides. Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. But withal prepare me also a lodging, for I trust that through your prayers... I shall be given unto you. There salute Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Written from Rome to Philemon by Onesimus, a servant. Hebrews chapter 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, 
who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they shall all wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But the which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Job chapter 1 There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep and three thousand camels and five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred she-asses in a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose, and rent his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground, and worshipped, and said, Naked came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly.